As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Welcome to the Gangs of Hollywood podcast. Hey gang, welcome to episode number five of Gangs of Hollywood. This episode, I'm joined by one of the most creative and incredibly funny guys that I have ever met. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Morgan. Wow, we, we haven't really met. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, that I, I virtually met. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, well, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I, I, I don't know if, if, if creative and crazy don't mean the same thing. I mean, maybe in your eyes. It's, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, always, always great to get together with you, man. It is indeed. Now, for anyone that's listening that may not be familiar with the plethora of your work, would you like to give them a small taste? Uh, sure. Uh, I don't currently have anything going on, <laughs> <laughs> which is odd for me. Uh, so there's uh, obviously the show that kind of sparked our friendship, which is the Hell Ming Power Hour, which is uh, mm-hmm. me and Danny and, and uh, Mark and the three of us just, I, I don't even know what you call the show. We're supposed to cover a movie. It never really yeah. ends up that way. You know, it's a lot of fun, a lot of made up kookiness. The reviews are fake. The uh, synopsis is fake. The commercials are fake. Yeah, we're just a bunch of fakers. <laughs> Everything's fake, but it's hilarious. Oh, well, thanks. And uh, there's short bus cinema. That's still kind of going out there, which is me and Johnny Krug, and we're trying to find the worst movie ever made. Uh, well, and I, I reckon you've come pretty close. There, there's been a few times. I think I've I threw up in my mouth a few times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a uh, House of Wax, which is kind of my horror type show that we kind of put together, which also has Johnny Krug on it, and a newcomer named Levi Garrett. Yes, folks, that's his real name, Levi Garrett. Levi Garrett. And uh, just uh, we're having a lot of fun with that, but you know, life gets in the way. You start getting busy. So for the past couple of months, I haven't had a chance to really work on anything. But there, there is some talks. There's talks going on of uh, trying to dig something out of one of these. I'm not <laughs> sure which one. But, uh, right. well, now that everybody's quarantined, people should have plenty of time. You know what? That's kind of been my thought. Except, except for where I work and Levi works there as well. Uh, they're, mm. they're one of those places that's like, you know, we don't care. We're just going to work. <laughs> so that's kind of where we are. <laughs> if they die, they die. You right. Know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, speaking of, of craziness and, you know, if they die, they die. This episode, we will be discussing, I think, one of the greatest dystopian future movies ever. Yes. 1971's A Clockwork Orange. Now, this this movie, oh my goodness, there's yeah. so much to talk about in this movie. So, let's listen to the trailer and come back with a few facts. There was me, that is Alex. And my three droogs, that is Pete, Georgie, and Dim. And we sat in the Corova milk bar trying to make up our Razoo docks what to do with the evening. The Corova milk bar sold milk plus, which is what we were drinking. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultra violence. little droogies <laughs> the evening's the great time isn't it Alex Bond he's enterprising aggressive young bold <laughs> vicious he'll do who on earth could that be now it was lovely music that came to my aid a bit of the old Ludwig van Featuring a new documentary with Malcolm McDowell. Stanley actually assures me we'll stick the lid locks in and in 10 minutes we'll do the shot. 10 minutes for a Stanley Kubrick shot? I don't think so. Stop it, stop it, please, I beg you! Food, all right. Great, sir, great. Try the wine. A 
Clockwork Orange, the 40th anniversary edition. Look for it on Blu-ray. Oh, it was gorgeousness and gorgeousity made flesh. Right, so as I mentioned, this is 1971's A Clockwork Orange, runtime of two hours and 16 minutes. And you know what? Doesn't feel like two hours. This goes by like a freight train. It does now. You know, I think back in the day when I was first exposed to it with all my 80s action flicks and stuff, I took the chance on this because of the incredible artwork on the cover of the box or on the VHS tape back in the day. Oh, yeah. And it just seemed like this movie went on forever back then. But now you watch it and it's just so, like you said, it just flies by. So it's strange yeah. how over the years, it, it's, well, it's just one of those that just, to me, gets better as it, as it goes along. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's not a it's not a action flick in terms of explosions and you know chases and everything else, but there is so much going on. Yes, yes, yeah. All right, so we probably should read the IMDb description, which says protagonist Alex DeLarge is an ultra violent youth in futuristic Britain. As with all luck, he eventually runs out, and he's arrested and convicted of murder and rape. And there's a lot of rape in this movie. While <laughs> in prison, Alex, uh, there is. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> While in prison, Alex learns an experimental program in which convicts are programmed to detest violence. If he goes through the program, his sentence will be reduced and he'll be back on the streets sooner than expected. But Alex's ordeals are far from over once he hits the mean streets of Britain and his life is forever changed. <laughs> That's not a bad summary. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, according to IMDb, the rating is 8.3 out of 10, which I think is about right. Um, yep. That seems pretty good. And uh, it got an R rating. No shock there, kiddies. <laughs> okay, so movie is directed <laughs> by... Yeah, I kind of lo lost you there for a second. I'm sorry. So they, 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 your mind wandered away. All of a sudden, you were watching scenes of ultraviolence. And, um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so it was directed by Stanley Kubrick, of course. Uh, while we may not revisit Kubrick's work on this show, I need to say that this movie uh, formed my love of cinema and of yep. classical music at a very young age. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why? All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this movie brought me to classical music, okay? And it was the first movie soundtrack vinyl I ever bought. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so moving into our stars, we have uh, Malcolm McDowell as Alex. This man has a career that spans more than 50 years and 268 credits. And we will be seeing him again in this movie, uh, and probably a number of times, including the early 2000s Gangster Number no. 1, which um, I have, think has a huh. really close link to this movie. It's There's a lot of 60s um, just violence and, and uh, Malcolm McDowell being insane. Yeah, well, it's it's the formula that he, you know, if you watch the the documentary of the making of this, they say that pretty much the rest of his career he's just playing Alex from there on out because he never really broke out of that character ever again. You know, it just it's it's just uh, he plays it so well. Yeah, either Alex or Caligula. Take your pick. <laughs> oh, that's a whole different movie we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, potentially not on this podcast, and maybe not on the podcast that that healthy people want to listen to. That might need to be on the short bus, actually. When you when you think about it, <laughs> or yeah, that'd do well on the short bus. Actually, that that would be. I I, I could imagine just hearing Johnny talk about this and just, with complete <laughs> shame in his voice. Yeah, he'd be going, and then there's some more titties. I mean, he'd say that like seventy times, right? <laughs> yeah, in the first ten minutes. You're right. <laughs> All right. So we, we we should get on to Alex's droogs, which were uh, Pete, played by Michael Tarn, who um, he basically, he's just a background actor, but did a lot of UK TV and all that sort of stuff. Georgie, who's uh, James Marcus, uh, another UK TV background mainstay for 40 years, and Dick, who is Warren Clark. Now... He's done like a lot of stuff in UK TV, but apparently he uh, he had major roles in Denzel and Pasco and uh, cop drama, and also played a voice in the kids. Uh, I think it's train cartoon called Chuggington. Wow! So what? yeah, from from a from a US standpoint on this, uh, yeah, I don't really recognize any of these guys from anything else, really. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's news to me. 
Mm, there you go. So there you go, kiddies. If you want to see Dim in a whole new light, listen to him talk like a train. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> yes. Thomas said, I'm going to smash your face in your yarbles. <laughs> uh, All right. So, <laughs> sorry. This movie really. Come and get one in your choo choo. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the the soundtrack for this movie features a lot of classical music. Um, and obviously it's converted to a very heavy, you know, Moog synthesizer, synthesizer sound, which I think was done by Wendy Carlos. It has a really specific feel. I mean, the whole soundtrack is really intense. Yep. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just, it's just the brilliance of Stanley Kubrick, and uh, it, it's one of those things that you see a lot of people rip off now i guess is the right word that that combination of the 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 incredible you know visuals that you're seeing even if it is violence and putting classical music to it really does something that just stays with you forever i mean it's it's a it's incredible how synonymous the music is in, in these scenes that when the scene pops in your head you're hearing the music as well even you know just in your oh, mind yeah. it's just it's just that much part of the film it's yeah it, it's unreal and even like that that very opening like one minute boom just that, that yeah. real solid it's just like yeah you know what you're in for and scores yeah and, uh, absolutely now there, there was one bit that i i, I read and it, it made me like go all twitchy because I'm, I'm like massively paranoid about eye stuff that apparently during the filming of the ludovico technique scene malcolm mcdowell scratched his cornea when they were like putting the, uh-huh. the little uh hooks in to hold his eyes open and that i look I said i was like i was literally like rubbing my eye just going oh no nah, that's just wrong so yeah the story is is he actually reached a point you know they kept shooting this thing for <laughs> i think it was several hours and they actually do have him in a straight jacket. And a guy, you know, that's sitting there with the eyedropper and putting the drops in his eyes to keep him from drying out. And they said it got to a point to where he literally was saying, that's enough, I've had enough. And he was screeching and stuff. They said actually the screech that he does that's in the film is actually one of them where he actually did this. And he took his shoulder to try to get out of the straight jacket. When he did, it caught the edge of one of those eye clamps and it pierced his, oh. his cornea. So that's that's kind of how that happened. Yeah, it's just just thinking about it, I'm like, I I, I want to rub my eye. I just oh yeah, want to make it stop. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, so uh, apparently, when the movie was originally released uh, in '73, it was actually released with an R rating, uh, replacing the original X, but it had uh, I think 31 seconds cut out of it, and there were a number of scenes that were um, changed, like the. The high speed sex scene was done. Yep. The Ludovico rape scene was done. Um, and, and apparently the that scene with with Alex like in the in the bedroom with the two girls that was changed. So you know, like there were bits that were cut out of it and a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Like I, I've watched that at normal speed and at slow speed, and it's really not. <laughs> it's by today's standards. Oh, it's not very that calm. Bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for the time, it was pretty shocking. But you're right in the middle of the, what's the word for it? The porn revolution, I guess you would say. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, I mean, because you're starting to have theaters that would show, you know, Benji during the day, and then you'd go to the same theater at night and see Behind the Green Door. So, you know, you were kind of pushing these boundaries of, is this considered really art? I mean, showing naked people all the time? Sure. But yeah, I mean, like you said, it's it's very calm now, but... uh well, you know, I think I saw this when I was, I don't know, maybe 14, 15. And it was pretty effective then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. For, for a young man, it's definitely uh, right up there. Yeah, <laughs> right up there. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the Japanese version of this had every single scene of nudity, nudity blurred out. That Someone had to do a lot of work there because there's a lot of nudity. Yeah, that would take a while, you know. Uh <laughs> It's it's strange how well, cultures are just different about that kind of stuff. I mean, we don't mind showing you, you know, chopping somebody's head off, but seeing a naked woman, can't have that. No, can't have that. No, no, we we can't even have, like, just reverse nudity from Vine. Stop let, that, let stop that. male nudity. Yes, we won't have that. And, I mean, there's a lot of male nudity in this movie, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just, uh, it's amazing how... <laughs> how subtle it can be and because it's attached to the rest of the movie. It's almost like the mentality of uh, Cannibal Holocaust. You know, because they actually did the actual stuff to the animals, which is terrible, it tricks your mind into thinking that you're seeing something that's really happening the rest of the time, which is not. 
And in this yeah. case, you get brief nudity in a movie that has a lot of well, it's very rapey, right? So <laughs> very rapey. So because of that, even the mild stuff, you you still got your sensors going out, your feelers are still going out there, and you're picking up on all this stuff. So K- Kubrick knew exactly what he was doing here, man. He he knew he had you pinned to the seat and taking you in a direction you just had no idea where you were going. Yeah, so so many different things going on. Now, before we get into the beats of the movie, uh, I, I just want to tag two things. One, this movie was banned in Singapore for 30 years. Wow. And it was banned in, ban, blah, 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 it was banned in South Africa for 13 years. Um, and you couldn't, you could only see uh, a cut version and you had to be over the age of 21. Wow. So basically making it like an X-rated type film, I guess. Yeah, wow. uh, yeah essentially. That's, that's pretty full on. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not saying that it doesn't deserve its R rating because it kind of does. But, uh, yeah, it's just crazy. And what's what, crazy. another thing that's incredible that should belong in this list is nobody ever really talks about it, but this is a low-budget film. Kubrick made this movie for nothing. Yeah, oh, you know, but there's no like, there's no huge sets. It, it's all you know. It, it's abandoned locations. Yeah. It's everything else. Like I said, it's a, it, it is very cheap. Yeah. Um, and that's not he, he didn't decide to do it that way. That's just what the movie company said. Okay, you can make it, but we're not going to give you any money. Yeah, yeah, we're we're not going to help you in any way. <laughs> um, and well, it's Kubrick, so he made the best of it. Yeah, well and true, without a doubt. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what's going on in this movie. We'll just hit the major beats here. Yeah. Um. Listen, we talked about that opening intro. You know, with with the uh the iconic voiceover. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, it's our narrator Alex, which is so good. Um. And again, we're we're introduced to nudity of a different sort with all the nude female furniture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a what a. <laughs> What a yobbles idea, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's so bizarre. And again, your feelers are already out. So if we're in a, you know, this is a futuristic bar and it's all statues of naked women in poses to be your tables and your, you know, your fountains, <laughs> you know, I mean, just. From the get go, you're already being hit. Your sensors are just going crazy at this point because you're like, yeah. and also, like you said, the the voiceover. I and and this may be just me being a, a novice at the time with movies, but this is the first one I remember where the main character was delivering this dialogue in this kind of manner, explaining the situation. So you're not you're not graduated into it. You're being caught up mm. with what's going on. There was me. That is Alex and my three droogs. That is Pete, Georgie and Dim. And we sat in the Corova milk bar trying to make up our Razoo dogs what to do with the evening. The Corova milk bar sold Milk Plus. Milk Plus, Velocet or Synthamesk or Drencrum, which is what we were drinking. This would sharpen you up and make you ready for a bit of the old ultraviolence. Yeah, yeah, there's no slow introduction of the characters, and there's no action, there's no story. It's like, this is where we are, this is what's happening, and you, you're going to hear it all from his perspective. And automatically, you know, you, you're dragged into his world, um, willingly or not, <laughs> because yeah. it, 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 it's an ugly, ugly world. And, you know, you sort of, you know, you've got that purple and white there. And I mean, look, I, I remember reading the book for this. And it's one of the few books I ever read that had a dictionary in it. Yeah, it yeah, you had to, because like, the. Uh, the the made up language, you know. Yeah, which they don't even bother for. Apparently, there is a version that has got subtitles on it uh, in English, but it's just like, no, nah, I think I can work out what we're talking about. Well, actually, I watched it last night to to review again for this, and I actually watched it with subtitles, and I was like, wow, I never really knew what he said there. I mean, it still gave you the actual language that there's that the words are saying, even though they don't make much sense. Yeah. But there's words in there. I'm like, yeah, I never knew he said that. So, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's right. Which now is, I can use yabbles. Which was which was followed up by my wife saying, "How many times have you watched this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I got the. I'm not watching that that movie again. Go watch it in the other room. <laughs> Basically, that's kind of what happened. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Bless their hearts. They know they know their limits. Um, so, listen, uh, we're in, I think, less than five minutes. Uh, and as we mentioned, this movie is very rapey. But, it, you know, we've got a rape in less than five minutes uh, into the movie yeah. uh, where he fights with Billy Boy uh, and, and his droops. And, again, you know, the language that they're using, you know, when he's taunting Billy, it's just like, oh, this is so weird. Oh, oh. Well, it Stinking chip oil! Come and get one in the yarbles! If you have any yarbles, you eunuch jelly thou! Let's get it, boys! Yeah, it, it's really taking... I think that's what makes it still hold up, because you're trying to make a futuristic kind of state, but not making it too... Buck, Buck Rogers like you know you're trying to make it close <laughs> enough to where <laughs> nice shooting Alex <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know it, it's it's uh, the language is such a part of what this movie is that and all the women which we haven't got there yet but all the women have you know the dyed hair which is very right on the money for now I mean everybody's oh, yeah. coloring their hair with Kool-Aid you know <laughs> 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 yeah, no, but it, it is. It's those those real neon, you know, purples and blues and and yellows and and reds and all that sort of stuff. Those really full on colours. Yeah. Um. And like you see it later, the, and sort of when Alex goes to the the record store. Yes. Um, you know the clothing that everyone's wearing there. It's all really bright and everything else. I just want to want to skip back because I want to talk about the record store a bit later. But oh yeah. Um. You know they 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 fight with obviously Billy and then we get the scene where they they steal the car. Um, <laughs> and of course this was completely robbed uh, ripped off by Rob Zombie in his uh, film clip for Never Gonna Stop. Oh well, wait a minute! Are you saying Rob Zombie ripped off uh, Kubrick? I would never say yeah, that. Look, <laughs> yeah, look, I know it's a controversial opinion. <laughs> I mean the what was the what was the what was the uh, the Salem the, the Salem movie that he did uh oh, which is a Salem which is a Salem yeah, yeah. I mean that whole thing is just I'm trying to be Kubrick I mean that's all it is yeah. so <laughs> yeah anyway thank thanks Rob we appreciate your hard work <laughs> never um, gonna stop yeah um we, and even the film clip has his wife in it like all of his movies um <laughs> Anyway, they uh, they come to a country home called Home. Um, <laughs> I great. love that it's a scene. I do too. Home. <laughs> uh, and this is this is the scene where obviously where Alex and his boys uh, basically beat up and rape the writer uh, F. Alexander uh, to the point of crippling him. While Alex, uh, we're into twelve minutes in, and it's rape number two. <laughs> uh, if you're so keeping rapey. score. <laughs> Yeah, if you're keeping score, and uh, not that I was scoring, it was just that I was trying to just keep keep up. Um, but Alex is singing, singing in the rain as he does it. Yeah, and it's just, and again, that's another thing. You know, you'll never look at Gene Kelly the same again. Right, absolutely. It, it's it's just synonymous with this movie now. So you can't even can't even watch the the real movie singing in the rain and not think of this. <laughs> yes, poor Gene. Um, Vidi well, little brother. Vidi, Vidi well. well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they go back to the back to the crow for a nightcap, um, and then we get the the scene where there's an opera singing, uh, an opera singer singing a bit of Beethoven, and, and you see that there's obviously a little bit of dissension in the ranks, uh, <laughs> and everyone, yes, righty right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dim Dim but, speaks up being just a regular a hole, and Alex doesn't <laughs> like it, smacks him with his uh, walking stick, and uh, yes. everything's falling apart at this time. Yeah, yeah. Well, no one likes being hit with a stick. Let's be honest. <laughs> um, gets the next day. Alex has decided he's not going back to school. Or not going to school that day. <laughs> got to paint him. Got to paint him. Paint him a Gulliver. Paint him a Gulliver. Paint him a Gulliver. It's just like okay, fair enough. It's whatever. He stays home. Um, and we get introduced to his. I think it's his probation officer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, Mr. Deltoid. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Deltoid. He he grabs him hard and firm <laughs> on, on, on the yarbles. <laughs> and you almost, you almost get the feeling like he did that for real because Malcolm gets up and it's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I mean that there's there's I mean again, it's just the chances this movie takes. Uh yeah. the scene that this guy I mean, the fact that this guy is on, I guess it's the parents' bed that he's sitting on when he just comes through and that voice that he's got when he's talking, yes. I mean, I just, yes. I love Mr. Deltoid, man. He, he's skipping to the end of the show. He may be my favorite character in this movie. I don't know. I just <laughs> love him. He's got that one, that one strange eye that kind of wanders off. And, yes, they said you weren't coming to school today. Yes. yes. <laughs> Been getting up to a little bit of mischief. Yes. <laughs> Gonna make me look bad. Mm, yes. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. Oh. And obviously, you know, we he he eventually leaves because Alex is not going to go to school or might go to school in this afternoon. <laughs> I can't remember how he, what he says, but he said, "Yeah, he might be, So that's all good. He goes. This is where he goes to the record shop and yeah. uh, he meets the 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 two girls yeah. uh, eating very phallic lollipops. That's yeah. It's the it's the early seventies. I mean, come on, that's what you do. If you remember, yeah. if you remember, well, you probably don't remember, but over here, you know, you had the Gong Show, which was a popular show that Chuck Barris tried to get fired from every episode. And what finally did it is he had two girls come out and lick the uh, popsicles. I mean, like seductively. Oh. That's how they. That's how the Gong Show ended. <laughs> there you go. I learned something new today. <laughs> so you kind of got this same thing going on here, where he's like, "Hey, well, this is George Carlin that said, you know, hey, women, remember." When all of us guys are standing outside that Hagen dazs <laughs> we're watching <laughs> and we're thinking, yeah. man, look at the tongue on her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Alex gets to see more than those young ladies' tongues um, yeah, yeah. as we get the obviously that that very speeded up sex scene uh, to the William Tell overture. <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and anyone that's tried to keep up with that has probably pulled a muscle. Um. <laughs> I always heard his immigrant song. That's the one you go for. <laughs> that's it. And you get to go, ah! ah! <laughs> it makes it that much more fun. Um, uh. Anyway, <laughs> Alex said... <laughs> It's downstairs <laughs> afterwards, and he's he's met by his his Drews, who are um obviously getting to the point of trying to uh, assert their own authority. Okay, hold it's on, a bit of an argument. Hold on, hold on. Before we get there, because that's a great iconic part. But come on, we got to step back just a hair because not only is the the sex scene in fast motion, but he's got them both in the bed. One gets up, puts her dress on. He's having his way with the other. He goes and takes the dress off of that one, gets her back in the bed. The other one's putting her dress on. He goes back and takes her dress off. I'm like, the stamina this dude's got. <laughs> yeah, well, he's young, Ricky. He's not like us. He's young. I guess, but man, uh, he's just like, come on, man. <laughs> They've got the good drugs in the future. Alex is there. It's all about... Uh, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, Although he doesn't pull his snake out of the drawer. Oh, yeah, so right. I've seen enough. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh yes, that that that, that whole scene is like, just bouncing around on the bed. Not not to mention the bedspread that he's got, you know. Oh yes, with with the triangles and the peaks on it. It's, yeah, it's, it's so weird. It's, yeah, but I'd still have it. Um, <laughs> where was I? Anyway, so yeah, he, he, the, after that epic sex sex scene, who look really? I think you need a nap and a sandwich after that. <laughs> Shoot, that the time that just got to the opening of the song, I'd been wore out. <laughs> uh, can you come back in a couple yeah. of hours? Let me take a nap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just amuse yourself. Go watch TV. Yeah. Right. Go mess with that cockeyed dude. that's in my parents' room for a while. <laughs> I get the feeling that they may not be his cup of tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. Alex, Alex eventually wakes up from his nap and uh, meets with the drinks downstairs. Who are uh, yeah? So they're they're upset. They have a bit of an argument. Uh, they obviously tell Alex that he doesn't. He's, he can't assert his authority like that. And again, we get the next really iconic scene. Yeah. Where they're walking along the canal and they start the fight. But the fight, in difference to the sex, is in slow mo. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. So it's it's completely again so Kubrick just completely going the opposite to draw your attention right into the the whole element of it. Yeah, you don't normally see fight scenes in slow mo unless it's like crazy falling off stuff. I mean, you know, these guys are falling into the water, but you know, he draws back and kicks dude in the yavels. 
<laughs> and then you know the the whole deal with with Dim, you know, being knocked in the water, then coming back up, and Alex pulling the knife out and giving a nice little you know rub across the hand there. Uh, you know, yeah. he was making a point. Hey, this is this is yeah. my gang, and uh, you guys want to go get the You're big more. big money, but uh, you know, oh, yes. somebody's got to be in charge here. So. Mm. Now, speaking of the big, big money, that we're going to... I'm going to skip ahead because there's just a bit of a scene in the pub. It's not all that exciting. Yeah. But we now are going to get to, I would suggest, the turning point uh, yeah. for Alex anyway. Oh, yeah. When they, they break into the cat lady's house um, and, you know, he, he goes in through a window and uh, he fights a, in, in a very, again, a very, like, <laughs> seasick point of view fight with... Uh, look, it's a giant penis. All right? It's a giant penis sculpture that rocks uh, yes oh it rocks it definitely rocks and it's as awkward it's it's got that odd shape that makes it awkward to pick up too so it's it's almost like picking up a a 90s or a late or early 2000s tv right they're like yeah. they're like front heavy but but the back is the part that you grab and you can't really hold it so alex <laughs> come on man when he walks in there and he sumo chops it <laughs> makes her upset <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that. That's just the greatest. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and, and you're just watching it like just slowly like rock back and forth. It's just like, <laughs> oh, that's it's almost hypnotic. And we can't ignore because this is everywhere in in every scene. There's pornography. I mean, this one. Yes. There's this cat woman who is just doing yoga or whatever, but on her walls are all these suggestive women. They're not pictures. Somebody painted these. And Alex had one in his room as well. And you were just like, where, I mean, is this just a thing that he knows in your psyche you're going to pick up on and just say, why is that there? <laughs> I mean, I've always heard that Kubrick never did anything by chance. Everything is 100% yeah. on purpose. So there's the reasoning of those pictures being on the wall is, again, your sensors are out there and you're picking up all this stuff. How can these people that are looked at in society as being straight-laced good people. I mean, you hear her talking on the telephone. Yes, well, I was listening to the people earlier, and they were saying that they said the same thing. But wait a minute, you got naked women on your walls! <laughs> yeah, well, pictures of naked women that have, like, one breast colored red. Yeah. And, and, and then, like, another one that ha has, you know, all of her groin painted green. And nobody and acts like, like this is a big deal, except for Alex when he walks in. I'm like, dude, you had a picture on your wall, too, and you're excited about an oblong, uh, weird, weight-shifting rockin' penis? I mean... <laughs> It's, yeah, it is, like you say, Kubrick doesn't do anything without a reason, and it is just, I, I think it's to, you know, to show that, that's, that really jarring difference to put you, you know, to put you in, in that unsettled mindset that it's not like, you know, it's not normal. It's right. not a, this isn't, this isn't today's society. It's like all this stuff is completely okay, and all these kids can run wild, but society still operates, but porn's fine. That's okay. Yeah, you know, it's just sex, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, it's just, just which was kind of the seventies attitude towards sex too. I reckon uh, absolutely. You know, the sixties was just like the sixties was like whoa, sex, and the seventies just like that's nah, sex. We we'll put it in everything. <laughs> now they were like sex and cocaine. Yes, <laughs> woo. And then the, then the eighties was just cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> play it faster. Play it faster. <laughs> yeah. All right, so obviously Alex does that, and he uh, he he beats her with the the giant penis. Yeah, and his which is an in, runs which, out. Uh, go on. I was gonna say that's an interesting scene too because you don't see him hit her with it. It it, it does a montage, this real quick flash of again those paintings on the wall. So it's just like mm. you know it's. These images are forever ingrained in your head. You don't forget them. And it's a simplistic no. thing that you're seeing. It takes the violence out of it. This movie in your head is very rapey and very violent, but it's not. It's just a, it's no. the perception in your head. Yeah. Well, see, look, in an 80s, you know, in an 80s movie, he would have smashed her skull in with that thing. He, yeah. And you would have seen every little bit of it. Right. All right, so we do that. Um, Alex hears the police, tries to escape. Sorry, I'm just thinking about that woman having her head smashed in with a giant. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. It's not going to go away. Happ happens uh, every time. <laughs> oh, the amount of times I've been waiting for a cup of coffee and gone, remember when that woman got her head smashed in with a giant? Uh, Is that Debbie Does Dallas? Which movie are you talking about? <laughs> Anyway, Dim Dim smashes Alex in the head with a milk bottle, and again, it's in slow mo. Yeah, uh, you know, you see the milk spray, you see the glass chatter. Alex is picked up by the police, and um, 
We then get we get to see Mr. Deltoid again. Evening, Sergeant. Evening, no. all. Does look a mess, doesn't he? Just look at the state of him. Love's young nightmare like. Violence makes violence. He resisted his lawful arresters. Well, this is the end of the line for me. The end of the line, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I like how the police say, do, do you want to just give him a quick one <laughs> on the chops? We yeah. won't mind. You want to rough him up? Go ahead. We'll, we won't say anything. We'll hold him for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll hold him for you. <laughs> uh, it's so good. Uh, and, and again, you know, it's clear that the police can just do whatever they like. True. And that ties in a little later on. Yes, yes, as we as we learn, um, and, and Mister Deltoid, uh, you know, he gloats the fact that the woman actually died, which makes Alex a, a murderer. Yeah, yes, you're a murderer. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and he's been sentenced to fourteen years prison. <laughs> Mister Deltoid, Mister Deltoid, um, the spit, now, the spit scene, man. You know, when oh, he spits on him, and he just, yeah. and it's there for so long. You're like, why is it taking you so long to wipe that off? It would be instant <laughs> yeah, for me. It, yes, <laughs> just big gobs of spit on his face. It's just blah. Yeah, again, it's one of those ones where you, you you're wiping your face like subconsciously, just making it go away. Yeah, man, it's horrible. <laughs> Uh, so then Alex is in prison. We get a whole bit where, uh, he's introduced to the, the head of the prison and he has to go through the process. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's the whole bit about stand behind the white line, which I thought was oh, really good. Man. Yeah. This, this whole scene is, is a work of art, man. It is brilliant. It's right up there with the, the beginning of, uh, uh the Blues Brothers. <laughs> really? Yes. Yes. <laughs> After a trial with judges and a jury and some very hard words spoken against your friend and humble narrator, he was sentenced to 14 years in Stargem number 84F among smelly perverts and hardened prestupniks. The shock sending my dadda beating his bruised and groovy rookers against unfair bog in his heaven and my mum boo-hoo-hooing in her mother's grief at her only child and son of her bosom like letting everybody down real or a show. Kind of the same thing, but it's yeah. in reverse, you know, because Jake, you know, Jake's getting out of prison, whereas you know Alex is being put in. Yeah, so, yes, put in. And, and, and again, you know, they they go through it. There's a lot of back and forth and weird angles, and you know, and Malcolm or Alex strips down, yeah. completely yeah. naked, and it's just like, and the 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 police officer looks up his butt with a torch. <laughs> You have any diseases? No, sir. <laughs> I mean, just the, the the dialogue in this whole thing, because you've got so many conversations going on at the same time. You've got, you know, the thing where he's taking off the stuff and the guy's putting it in the box, a pair of black patent boots. <laughs> Worn. Worn. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, then he's asking him all these questions at the same time. Oh, have you ever been a homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Bend over and touch your toes. <laughs> it's, I don't know, man. It, it's so brilliant and so nuts at the same time, which, you know, I, there's probably a lot of truth of how you're handled in this kind of situation. I mean, but yeah. I don't know, man. It, oh, but it, it, it's again, it's taken to the absolute extreme. Yeah. Because that's what Kubrick does to, to sort of throw you completely out of that, that point where you're almost comfortable. You almost knew what was going on and we're going to change it all completely. Pick that up and put it down properly. 
<laughs> I mean, just everything about it. Hey, you you were the boss of your little group. I'm the boss in here. You know, it's that thing. Yeah. It's, and he's given a number, and he has to remember that number. <laughs> he will only be referred to as that number. Six double five two three one. Yeah, yeah, that that that's the number. Yes, <laughs> even though I only watched it a little while ago, that number has gone from my head. Ah, uh, but he is a number. So, <clears throat> Alex, uh, Alex is in prison. He attempts to obviously, you know, rehabilitate by uh, working with the chaplain. Uh, and I like the fact that he's he's reading the Bible, but only for the violent bits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so strange. <laughs> he's so weird. Uh, and we we get to see Malcolm McDowell in uh, Roman outfit again. Uh, sure, calling back to Caligula. That's one of them. Yeah, I mean, he is a little foreshadowing there of his future career. <laughs> Very true. Very true. So Alex eventually finds out about the Ludovico technique and um, asks the prison chaplain whether he can, you know, get involved and get helped out. And, you know, it's pretty clear that no one is really sure about what's going to happen with this. But um, Alex, you know, manages to convince who is it's the Secretary of the Interior? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that guy couldn't be any more British if he tried. Oh, He's man. He's like the epitome of, of like the British politician. Like they even play like Land of Hope and Glory while he's there. <laughs> It looked like Sir John Gilgood. I mean, he's just walking through there. It's like, wow. <laughs> mm. He's perfect. Yes. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's British. He's the, the man. Yeah. Um, and so we're probably, we're kind of around about the middle of the movie now. And Alex is taken to the rehabilitation center. And, uh, you know, we, he's, he doesn't know what to expect, but, you know, he, he takes his drugs. They shoot him full of drugs. And he's just like, yeah, this is the, he thought it was going to be a holiday, obviously. And then we see that initial scene of him being strapped in the chair and it's it's the image that everyone knows from yeah. this movie if they know nothing else yeah. they know this bit yeah yeah and it, it again like you said it's just burned into your memory and you know the narration thing here just makes it work so well too because him explaining hey you know when, when it first started off and you started having the fight scene and he was really kind of getting into it and he started feeling a little nauseous then you got the rape scene coming up next and and him walking it through through it with you and of all things, you know, it's, it's when he's watching the concentration camp, you know, World War II stuff with Ludwig Van playing in the background is what really sets him off. And he says, oh, I'm cured. I promise. Praise be to God. I'm cured. Just make it stop. <laughs> it's a sin. Make it stop. And yeah, they're like, see, yeah, and, no, it's for your own good. Yeah, okay. We keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> What's all this about sin? Using one big bag like that, it did not harm to anyone. They told them to stop using. Are you referring to the background score? Yes. You've heard Beethoven before? Yes. So you're keen on music? Yes. Can't be helped. Yes, the punishment element, perhaps. Yes, th this will be the punishment element to go with it. It's just like, oh no! It's just, yeah, and it's just you can see that he's yeah, he's like physically and emotionally just like destroyed, and they don't care. They do not give a crap. Right? Yeah. <sighs> Well, um, so it's, two weeks. Yeah, go. On. Well, I was just gonna say it's for the greater good, you know, because we're we're oh, yeah. we're rehabilitating people here, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, apparently the prisons are going to be full of political prisoners soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Again, we're not sure why, but that that seemed important at the time. <laughs> it is. Um, it is. Yes. Well, uh, well, as we as we turned out, yeah, the the man that he attacks him and right. later on ends up being a political prisoner. Right. So, yeah. Um. So Alex goes through his treatment. Two weeks later, we see a demonstration of uh, <laughs> for the you know for the public, uh, and you know with the actor, they you know, and, you know he's abusing him, he slaps him, you know, and Alex tries to fight back and is you know. <laughs> down and he makes Alex lick the bottom of his shoe. Oh man, yeah. It's this John C. Riley looking guy comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did that because I don't like you. 
And yeah, <laughs> makes him lick his shoe and it's like, wow, okay. Oh, it's, so, it's so great. What I love though is like, you know, Alex is on the floor in agony, like thinking he's going to die and the guy takes a bow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, know, I love that. I mean, that, that may be the little bit of humor that's in here that I can't help but enjoy every time, you know, because, you know, to them, they're putting on a play, you know, hey. Yeah. <laughs> It's my greatness that made this guy sick, you know. <laughs> That's I'm such a great actor that this man is feels like he wants to die. And what I love too is you've got your, you know, the 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 warden that has been watching over him that was so mean to him when he first came in, who just really hates the guy the whole time. Yeah, he's sit, oh, yeah. sitting there in the crowd, and when they're talking about doing all this, he like this whole rehabil- rehabilitation thing. He thinks it's just a bunch of crock, anyways. But the next mm. performer that comes out. <laughs> Is the oh. yeah the the hottie that comes out and they show his face sitting in the crowd and he's just like oh yeah ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah look he, he, he's he's jaws just on the floor it's just like <laughs> oh oh and, and like I, I like how like again the you know they're shooting from the ground up. Yeah. Towards her face. You know, and like Alex is trying to reach for her exposed breasts and just falls down. And it's just like, oh. <laughs> and again, the, the, the warden's still there just going, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, and, and, and again, after he falls down, she takes a bow too. I'm like, and she's prancing around like she just, this, this big ballet number or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My breasts made him feel sick. Well done. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's so bizarre. It is so bizarre, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I like it, they just go, yep, that's fine, you're free to go. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. Send, him out, send him out into the world, yeah, that's fine. You know, we've seen you lick a guy's shoe and try to die when you grab a woman's breast, so just, that's fine. Yeah. Go home. You know, he goes back to his parents' house um, and somehow manages to get in, and uh, they've replaced him with Joe, the lodger. <laughs> <laughs> this guy... <laughs> Now look at what oh. you've gone and done and upset your mother. <laughs> <laughs> upset your mother. And it, it, They've been more of a parent to me than you were, were ever a child to them. And of course the dad's like, well, we really just can't kick Joe out. I mean, he paid the next two months rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way to make that believable, dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, 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 re- he sounded really committed to it. Like, yeah, sorry, you know, Joe's here now and he's very cozy with your mother. Um, which, which, <laughs> which I thought was a little, like he puts her arm, his arm around her. Right. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I tell you what's weird too, because as a youngster, when I saw this, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, man, his parents seem really old compared to him. Yeah. And now I watch it and I'm like, they're not near as old as I remember them being. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's right. A different set of eyes. All of a sudden, yeah, look, they're, they're on the gray side, but yeah. Yeah, they're not like super old. Like I'm sure at 15, I went, no, they're like super old. Yeah, What's I just going on there? I, in my mind, the mom was like, you know, way older in my mind, like real wrinkled face stuff, and she really wasn't. I think it was just the makeup and stuff she had on that yeah. kind of did that, but. Yeah, it's just weird. Well, that, that and the fact that, yeah, the purple, like the purple and blue hair. <laughs> I think that's what sets it off too. Like, <laughs> so weird, so weird. So, you know, Alex goes out into the world clutching his, uh, clutching his, his belongings because apparently everything else got sold, which I thought was a little hard. Yeah. And the snake had an accident. <laughs> yeah, so much for the good of being released back into the world and being reformed and you come back and pretty much everybody's turned their back on him. So, you know, so he's going to try to make his own way. Uh, yeah, that doesn't go too well. <laughs> no, no. Because the thing is, everybody knows him. Like, he's in the newspaper, everyone knows his face. And, of course, who's the first person he comes across? But the old man yeah. that him and his boys beat up right at the start of the movie. Yeah. And seeing Alex get beat up by a bunch of bums, a little bit funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, again, the the, the big takeaway from this movie for me growing up was something I've always said in my life is what you do comes back to you, you know? Ooh, yeah, and uh, this is a I'm big up. case of that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, you know, him and his buddies picking on the bum at the beginning, if you got some cutter, you can stay at spade, you know? <laughs> and which is I always figured a scene that probably would have been cut pretty heavily. I know in, in, in England and stuff, they don't like the shots mm. of somebody being kicked when they're down. Right. And yeah. of course, there's a lot of kicking people when they're down in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of kicking people when they're down. So, but yeah, so the old dude kind of gets his revenge with his buddies, <laughs> the gang of of homeless people. Uh, yes, pretty strange. 
And, and of course, yeah, very strange. And of course, uh, fortunately for Alex, or so he thinks, the uh, the fight's broken up by two policemen. Right. Who turn out to be Dim and George. That's right, his old groogs. Long time no video, Drew. How it goes? <laughs> it's impossible. I don't believe it. Evidence of the old glasses. <laughs> Nothing up our sleeve. <laughs> no magic, little Alex. <laughs> a job for two, who are now of job age. The police. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two jobs for those of job age. <laughs> right. Yeah, the perfect fit. And, uh, they even make a reference to that yeah. of saying it, you know, they found the perfect job because they didn't really change. They just found the job that <laughs> fit into their lifestyle. Which is big. Right. Up. Paid them to be thugs. <laughs> now, this scene, when, when, oh, the, would... the ones that stick out to me, this is the one that always amazed me. And it's not because of the way it's shot. I mean, cause it's just a straight on shot, but they take him out in the middle of nowhere. And they commenced to just drowning him in this trough that's for pigs, basically. I mean, hand, handcuffs behind his his arms behind his back, and just push his face down. And this scene goes on forever. They don't like pull him up every once in a while, let him get a breath, and put him back down like in other movies. He is down here the whole time. Guy is just holding his head down there, and the other guys beating him with a nightstick. I mean, it's just like, yeah. holy crap, man. Yeah, it, it's really harsh. Like yeah. I said, it is really, you know, like, like I said, there's nothing spectacular about the about the location or anything else, but yeah. there's some, it sticks with you. Yeah, it, it it just like I said, it seems to go on, and it's really it's it's a different level of violence. Um, I think because you know that he's helpless, right? Like you know that he can't do anything. Yeah, yeah, it's that it's that thing of you know the brilliance of this film is the same thing that happens in. Uh, we're going to bring up Rob Zombie again. He might have stole this idea because of it. But in Devil's Rejects, you end up feeling for the people at the end of that movie that get shot up by the cops, even though yeah. they're absolutely terrible people, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're in a Rob Zombie movie. They have terrible yeah. people. So it's kind of the same deal here. Here's a guy that you feel for, even though you know deep down this guy's done some terrible stuff. But you end up rooting. He's a murderer or a rapist. He's just, but you're there. Yeah, like I said, all of a sudden you feel for it. Right, right. And that's such a, a psychosis thing that you go through with this movie. I mean, it's, it's, you kind of catch yourself going, wait a minute. Why am I caring for this guy? He deserves all this, you know? He's an animal now. Um, oddly enough, they, they dump him out, out in the woods, and lo and behold, in the rain, Alex makes his way to home. <laughs> home, again. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, we're back home, which is quite, you know, convenient. Um, and Alex knocks on the door once again, and we, we see Mr. Alexander, who is now um, obviously paralyzed. Yeah. And he's very hunky man serving Julian. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing I've always kind of said. I've always wanted more details of this. I mean, where did he find this guy? <laughs> I mean, what yeah. what makes you go, you know what? Yeah, uh I don't, I don't need another woman. I'm just going to get a big muscle guy to just carry me and my wheelchair around everywhere. Yeah, that, that's right. It, it's not like, no, I need a nurse. No, I need a giant muscle guy. That's <laughs> what I need. Oh. Uh, we're wearing booty shorts, which is the problem. <laughs> it's just like, whoa. It's just, anyway, moving on from Julian. Um, So, you know, he, he breaks in and, and Julian, like Julian carries him like he's a child. Right. It's just like, eh, brings him in. And um, Alexander realizes that, you know, he's the guy that, um you know, has had treatment done and he's been treated. And, you know, they bring him in and, you know, try to take care of him because he thinks that he could potentially, you know, use him for his political gain. And then yeah. uh, realizes while Alex is in the bar singing, singing in the rain again. Yeah. That he, uh, he's the man that crippled him and obviously raped his wife and, and raped his wife. Who, what eventually killed her? Yes. Well, I think, yeah, I think she ended up. No, that's right. Yeah. She died of, yeah, she died of pneumonia, but they, he, uh, Alexander believes that obviously it was due to, due to rape, being, which is, yeah, you know, quite possible. Sure. Never, never can tell. Um, and. It's probably because that weird bed thing that she was staying in all the time what was up with that <laughs> yeah th but they had like that that 70s like future furniture they had like weird egg shapes and lids on it yeah like, so yeah it looked like the egg that um mork for mork came from you know <laughs> 
Exactly. Yes. They had a mork egg. In, in the exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so they end up uh, drugging Alex and uh, and sticking him upstairs. Which is a great scene. And... Great scene. Oh. <sighs> the pain and sickness all over me like an animal. <sighs> then I realized what it was. The music coming up from the floor was our old friend Ludwig van and the dreaded Ninth Symphony. what I had to do and what I had wanted to do and that was to do myself in to snuff it to blast off forever out of this wicked cruel world one moment of pain perhaps and then sleep forever and ever and ever You know, they've, they've got pl- the Ninth Symphony playing through the floor um, up into the room and, you know, Alex is, like, just screaming, Stop! Stop! He's, like, kicking the floor and everything. And, like, Alexander's just down there going, Yes! Yes! There, there's a point when you have to learn to lie, though, because he those people came in and interview him and you don't... Oh, yes. He talks about the music being the thing that dro- would drive him insane. So you just say, Hey, anytime somebody plays, I don't know, Leo Sayer, I want to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was... partly true. <laughs> you make me feel like dancing. <laughs> I want to kill myself right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, but the, he's up front. No, that's what makes, you know, the scenes of violence and uh, Beethoven's Ninth, that makes me feel like dying. Like right. peaceful, yeah. like with no pain. <laughs> like with no pain. <laughs> Write this down. Yeah, Beto, V A N. No, I know how to spell it. That's but, awesome. Uh, I mean... Yeah, <laughs> that old bit. Uh, you know, so he's upstairs, he's like screaming, you know, he's, he's going to die. And he decides that there's no other choice but to jump out of the window. Yeah. And uh, attempt to kill himself. And the next thing we know, Alex is in bed. Uh, in. Yeah, hospital bed. Yeah, in, in what in the hospital bed? You know, covered. He's he's got bolts and frames and <laughs> and uh, casts and everything on him. And, and what I like is they cut away from you know like from him and they pull back and you see him in bed with all these machines and you can hear oh. oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that caught me off guard because I'd totally forgotten about that. You know, until I watched it again mm-hmm. last night and I, I couldn't help but just snicker a little bit. I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So classy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have, having sex in the in, in the, yes, in the comatose patient's room. And again, I mean, it's not like she's coming. You know, it's not like the nurse comes out and she's straightening up. I mean, 
boobs are hanging out. I mean, like, uh, like, you yeah, know, yeah. like that would happen, you know. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that's he's, right. he's coming like, too now. <laughs> Yes. Oh, he's he, doctor. He's coming too. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, maybe my maybe my boobs can hypnotize him back to sleep. Um, um, so we then cut to obviously the, you know the next day, and Alex has uh, had some psychological tests with uh, adding adding the, uh, oh. the, just say what comes into your head, Alex. It's brilliant. When the the lady's in the bed and it says you can have whatever you want, and he goes, "No time for the old in out, dear. Just come to read Demeter." <laughs> Yes. yes. Oh, some eggy wigs. I want to smash them. You <laughs> want to smash them. And you he's know, so proud of himself. Yeah, like he's like doing the best answers ever. And she's like, okay, that's good. <laughs> you know what you can do with that watch? <laughs> <laughs> Stick it up your arm. So great. So funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We then get the the minister comes back, you know, and he's apologizing because it's it's all about obviously, you know, uh, covering good good PR and you know, right. making sure the government isn't held accountable. They offer him a job and you know, a, a stereo and everything uh, he could he could ever want. And um, this is the bit in the movie that I've talked to like multiple people about, and it, it's the it's the bit where you know they're bringing the stereo and it's the very close of the movie and they're playing the music and Alex. Um, like you can see in his mind that he's having a scene of mm. having sex with a woman in the snow <laughs> while people in formal attire are applauding, <laughs> and and he goes, "I was cured, all right." And the movie closes, but the look on his face is like he's he's dying, like he's like had an aneurysm or something. And it's just like, uh, and then the movie stops, and everyone I talk to has a different opinion. Hmm. So, do you think that he he's he dies or he's he's okay? I think he's okay. I think he's in his mind he is one. He's gotten yeah. through the situation. He's on the other side. He did get reformed, but because of him jumping out the window, it shook something up. And he's back to normal. I mean, he's back to what he considers normal. Well, yeah. Normal so he's him. he feels like he's got it made now because everybody's still going to think he's this, you know, la da good guy who's had this hard time, and now he's got a cush job. He's got the the, yeah. the government's going to take care of him the rest of his life, and he's probably just going to go back and doing things like he wanted to do before. Yeah, probably. Oh no, listen. It's just for me. I, I, I've I've watched it so many times, and it's the look on his face. Like his eyes will like roll up into his head, and he's like, ah. and it just it, it's like you know the, that'd be the ultimate insult that he's cured. Yeah. But then his brain just overloads. Yeah. And, and and he dies. I don't know. That's possible. Open too. for suggestion. Yeah. Open for interpretation. Yep. Don't know. So now you did mention it earlier, but what's your favorite scene in this movie? <sighs> Man, to pick one is so hard. I mean, because yeah, I know. there's so many iconic scenes that just stand out. Um, if I ever talked to somebody about the scene, if I if I had a copy of it and was going to show them a scene from it, I almost have to go to the dunking, you know, where they've got him out in the wilderness and they're dunking his head just because of just how incredibly insane it is. Um, okay, okay. I, I can see that. Listen, that is, it, it's so... It's so different from the rest of the movie. It is. It is. It, 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 you know, it's so, so, yeah, everything's, uh, you know, I suppose it, it's destroyed and desolate, you know, like the, everything's like in ruins. It's, it, and then all of a sudden you're out, in the, you know, you're in the forest. Well, and it's the impact of here's the guys that were your, your buddies who at one mm. point you had to straighten out. Now they're the ones in control. You're, you're helpless. You can't do anything about it. And this is what they do to you. So again, it's, yeah. it's, it's payback, but, they don't understand the impact of, you know, they even said they knew that supposedly he'd been reformed. They didn't care. No, no, didn't care. Yeah. They just wanted to get payback for, for what he did to them. Yeah. And that's fair enough. Look, uh, it's still for me, it, it's the whole fight with the cat lady. That yeah. weird POV back and forth, um, that you know, smashing her that even though you don't see it and, and the, the, the emotion that you, despite the fact that he's wearing a mask, the emotion that you see on his face, it goes from like just smug arrogance to pure terror. Right. So quickly. And yeah. it's just, I don't know. It's, and again, it's something. <laughs> Being beaten to death with a giant penis, so it sticks in my head. Um, and the opening scene, man, the the slow crawl, oh, 
with the camera fa- yeah. pulling back and you're you're letting the story just start opening up and you get in the dialogue that that opening scene is uh, again iconic so it's just there's too many to pick one that just really stands yeah. out because it, it's it's a whole series of incredible images and it's kubrick so it's, it's, there's this thing yeah. it's it's amazing that if anybody else shot this a lot of this stuff would be boring cuz the shots are not yeah. quick cut like you said it earlier the things that you get quick, quick cut edits and stuff is stuff that you wouldn't focus on. Just like, uh, the only scene that has this real fast edit stuff going on is the, the statues of the four Jesuses that are like dancing together. There's this weird montage that happens real fast with these shots. But then, you know, like you said, you got the sex scene, which is in fast forward. Then you got a fight scene that's in slow motion. Uh, but there's a lot of scenes that are tight in the box. That should be, should be boring, but they're not. And that's the brilliance of, of Kubrick. He knew exactly what he was doing. Mm. Well, I mean, look, the fact that we're talking about it, you know, almost, you know, 40 plus years onwards is, is testament to the fact that this is an amazing, yeah. amazing. And, um, well, it, it, for- an one. Liter- it, it forces you to stop and think about what you're seeing. And that's the problem. It's just like with people with 2001. They're, they're waiting for the story to pull them along and tell them what's going on instead of focusing on what is it you are seeing. Try to process what you're seeing and come up with your own evaluation. Just like the ending of this movie you're talking about. That's Stanley Kubrick. He wants you to think about what you're seeing, not just take it in and digest it. And the story starts here and it ends here and that's it. He, he's really big yeah. on that idea of what do you get out of it? Brilliant. Yeah, you need you need to take away from it. You need to process it. Like you said, you know, you, you've yeah. got to think about what's going on. It's not something you just you, you don't consume it and then forget about it. That just doesn't what, happen. Why do you keep revisiting it? Because you feel like there's something in there that that you just haven't quite figured out yet. So you always try to go back and add a little bit to, more to what you know. I've done that a bunch of times with 2001. There's some things there you're just like, yeah, I, I give up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's just bonkers, but okay. <laughs> All right, now um, leader of the pack for this one, it's got to be it's got to be Malcolm McDowell's house yeah. for me. Yeah, without you know, a I doubt. I don't think there's anyone else. I mean, it's his story. Yeah, you know, there, there's you don't see anyone else. Um, yeah. And finally, what is your rating out of five for a Clockwork Orange, Ricky? For me personally, on my on on my scale, it's a definite five because just like you said, this is this is the first movie that made me appreciate actual filmmaking, where you could tell that this was a a, a labor of love, and then you learn more about the fact of Kubrick was more than just a director. He was involved with everything about this movie: the 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 editing, you know, the the post sound, the 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 music. I mean, everything was meticulously put together by him, and uh, you know, it's just a brilliant piece of filmmaking. He he didn't even want to do it. He didn't even want to do it. He the the guy gave him the book when he's making two thousand one, and he's like. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get this. And because you had Easy Rider come out and uh, some other youth movies is what he called them. Because of those youth movies, it's like okay, those are kind of a big hit. I'm gonna make the ultimate youth movie, and that's what he approached with with taking the story and turning it into this. Yeah, it's one hell of a youth movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. You know, I fully agree. It's a five out of five. That is uh, probably one of the simplest uh, ratings I will ever have. Yeah. All right. So uh, before we close up, I'll give you an opportunity to tell folks where they can find your back catalog. All right. So if you're wanting to follow me for my new bull riding contest that I've been ger- currently doing, uh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the bulls that are new. Don't get your mind in the gutter. Uh, <laughs> all of, all of my shows are currently able to be found on the Legion Podcast Network, just like my buddy the Witch. So, uh, Yay! if you go to Legion Podcast and scroll down, you'll see the 15 shows that I have that I'm not doing anything with. <laughs> and, uh, you, you can, you can get them on the, on the iTunes, on the Apple Podcast or the Applecast, whatever they're calling it crap. You young kids with all your titles, you can go find it on, you can go find it on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> on the YouTube, go to the YouTube. Go to the YouTube. Yes. <laughs> it's there. Now, as Ricky said, it is, if you go to legionpodcast.com, you will find all of Ricky's stuff. Go to the Facebooks too. Yeah. Because they're there. And they're hilarious. Yeah, we have a good time. It's it's a lot of fun. But yeah, uh, I recommend, you know, Short Bus for sure and, and Hell Ming. Those, those are my main shows. They are an absolute blast. I mean, the, the last show that we did for Short Bus was we covered a movie called The Killing of Satan, which is a Philippines movie. 
it, it is so bonkers, man. It's one of the craziest things I have ever seen. And we had a blast talking about that flick, man. It is it's just insane. And um hell me killing of Satan. Get on board. Yeah, absolutely. I think the next one we're gonna do is uh it's called Ro- Robo Vampire. <laughs> I've seen that movie. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible, yeah. So it's basically Robocop killing Chinese vampires. Which is probably a good idea right now. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Very much. You get so. you get bit by a bat, you become a Chinese vampire. We need to we need to stop this crisis right now, and we need RoboCop mm-hmm. to do it. Which is actually not even RoboCop. I mean, the movie poster it's obviously Peter Weller's <laughs> RoboCop, but in the movie it's like a dude with some like I don't know cooking pans on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'm gonna have to watch that again just so I can catch up. That is fantastic. Well, thank you very much, sir, for uh, for joining me. I love any opportunity I get uh, to chat with you. It's always a great one. Same here, man. I mean, you're you're one of my favorites, man. You you're one of my peeps. Yes, my peeps. <laughs> All right. Speaking of peeps, coming up in uh, on our next episode in two weeks' time, we're going to run screaming from future London to seventies Japan with a new guest talking about nineteen seventies stray cat rock delinquent girl boss. <laughs> so, oh, again, very. Um, <laughs> be, be, be a good fella and leave a rating or review whichever app you're listening to the show on and make sure you share it with the rest of your gang on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram as GOHpod and at www.gohpod.com Most of all, make sure you say hello to your little friend for me. I was cured alright, cured alright, cured alright, cured alright, cured alright, cured alright.